All right, listen, listen, listen. <laughs> Today we're gonna pinpoint our focus a little bit because my ADHD really needs it right now. We're gonna be talking about the worst martinis from Bar Rescue. I just wanna talk about martinis. I just wanna talk about martinis. I am overworked, underpaid, and understaffed. Literally, I'm the only one here. <laughs> I'm tired, I'm having a rough day, but I'm here. Like service industry workers, I'm here, okay? Even though I'm going through it, I'm here, but I'm gonna put on a happy face and treat y'all like you are my customers. I'm gonna act like everything's fine while I'm inside going through it. If you wanna tip me, like the video. That's how you tip me. You like the fucking video. I can't have a drink because it's too early, okay? We're making improvements. Growth. We're not drinking before noon anymore. Wow, what a step up. So I'm gonna sit here and drink my coffee. I'm also having a bad hair day. That's why it's beanie time. So let's get into these bartenders that apparently don't know how to make a fucking martini, which is like, basic shit. Martinis are like the easiest thing to make. It's like the alcohol in the glass pretty much. But I'll talk about whether or not they really fucked up and if they did fuck up, what they did wrong. So anybody watching this doesn't do the same shit. Let's get into this video. <laughs> Dirty booth. Oh wow. Watch your oh, dress. That's disgusting. There's a tear in the booth. There's a tear in the booth at a bar. Calm the fuck down. Are you at the Ritz? Little shit like that pisses me off. Already, we're off to a great start. Should it be fixed? Absolutely. But if it's a problem, I don't, what, what? Go to a different booth. Hi, how are you? Hey. Oh. Can I get you started? Let's one martini, please, with the lemon. Give a tank gray martini, please. Thank you. Troy, can you get Two of the easiest things to make. Shake them on ice. Serve them with a twist. Please tell me that this girl's not gonna put a towel down instead of wiping it herself, at least. Oh my God. That is grotesque. So, am I getting paid to clean their furniture? Are they? <laughs> Are they? Where's the busser? I don't think that girl was even the bartender. So, like, I, I'm only, I'm not gonna judge the server. That is rude and disrespectful when you sit somebody. You sh the table should be wiped down and clean before you sit anybody, A. Hey. There's Chelsea, she's a bartender. She has not moved. I haven't seen her make a drink. No, a single one. She's like the worst hood ornament ever. Chelsea is an ornament. Places like this have ornaments. They're misogynistic bars. <laughs> they are the bartenders that are planted there just to get tips. They are the bartender that is planted there not to make anything because they probably don't know how to do anything. Their job is literally to sit there with their tits out to make people tip while everybody else makes the drinks. <laughs> I don't think that tastes like tank gray. I don't think that's tank gray. It tastes cheap. The gin drinker likes to taste the spirit. So if a gin drinker is saying it doesn't taste like their go-to, you know something's up. Suck my dick. Suck my dick. I'm so not on the customer's side today. I mean, because I'm in a bad mood. More so because the first thing we're gonna point out is that that woman hasn't stopped complaining since she came into the bar. She came in in a bad mood. Also, could it not be Tanqueray like she ordered? Absolutely. If that's the case, then yeah, that's fucked up on the bartender side. However, I'm gonna point out something that happens all the time is people, especially gin people, I don't know what's wrong with y'all, but it happens more often than not, like to be snooty as hell and pretend and act like they know more than the bartender. The amount of times a gin drinker has ordered a specific gin in a martini and had me make it, and then I gave it to them, and they said, this isn't what I ordered. And I said, really? Because I made it, and I put what you wanted in it. And they were frustrated and fought me on it. So what did I do? I took the same drink, walked around the bar, gave them the same drink back, and said it was different, and all of a sudden it was perfect. That's the only reason I'm talking about it. <laughs> I'm just bringing my personal trauma into this. <laughs> Tonight is the stress test. I just want to make sure they can nail a good martini. No ice? There's no, no ice? She poured... <laughs> she poured the alcohol right into the tin with no ice, no other ingredients, didn't shake it, and just poured it into the glass. Sweetie, darling, common sense, what do you think happened? Did the metal flavor the alcohol? What do you think happened? <laughs> this is the easiest moment to get me on your side, okay? I'm already feeling very combative, but I can't defend absolute stupidity. Oh my God. I don't think Chelsea's ever really been challenged because their manager doesn't manage anything. I don't think Chelsea's ever made a drink. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think Chelsea has ever made a drink or been expected to make a drink. Now, why did you put it in the tin? I don't know. She put the garnish right in there. She doesn't, she, she doesn't know what she, her job is not to make drinks. 
Okay, fine. I'll redo it. No, you got your fingers in there. No? Yeah. Oh, in there, yeah. Just make her the hostess. Why is she behind the bar? Put her tits out front. <laughs> it's good to do the same thing. Don't um, yeah, I'm a steak guy. All right. This is clearly not a female-friendly environment. Look at how the men are being served, but the women are waiting. That's because they know where the tip is. Is it wrong? Yes. Does it happen? Yep. However, on the flip side, that also happens when men are bartenders at a straight bar and they always go to the hot girls waiting first. Whether you're the bartender or the customer, your eye is always gonna go where to where I guess you're most attracted. Is it wrong? Absolutely. A good bartender is able to not do that. Whether it's the bartender putting their focus where their dick aims or the customers knowing that and using it to their advantage. The amount of times I've had girls come to me at the gay bar and put their tits on the bar expecting to get a free drink, I'm like, sweetie. Sweetie, I'm so sorry. When I'm bartending, I'm basically castrated. I don't care if there's a dick or pussy right in my face. You pay for that drink. <laughs> Good bartenders. Look at them drinking champagne out of these bottles. She's not even trying to hide the fact that she's drinking back there. That's inappropriate and it's irresponsible. You put in that mouth on that bottle. Is that is that bottle also serving customers? <laughs> Who ordered the glass of wine with a splash of hepatitis? There's Joey, the manager. Look at this. It took over nine minutes to serve the female customers. Joey, the male manager, went to the female customers. <laughs> dirty martini. Okay. Thank you. It's very dirty. Sounds a little too dirty. It's a little too dirty. I didn't hear them specify how dirty they wanted it. I heard a dirty martini without explanation on how dirty they wanted it. So both people are wrong. The bartender is more wrong in this situation because you should always make it less dirty if they don't specify just to be safe. Because you could always make it dirtier, but once the olive juice is in it, you can't take it out. Less is always more in this situation, especially in a small volume drink like a martini because you got less space to work with. So a little bit of olive juice is going to go a long way in that situation. Are you guys used to using jiggers or free pouring? I use a jigger, but they're okay with us free pouring. I've never ever learned how to use a jigger in my life. It, it should make it easier, to be honest. If you're a bartender and you're free pouring, you should also know how to use a jigger. Honestly, you should be able to use both. Well, what else was I supposed to put in here? Olive juice. Where is it? What else was I supposed to put in a dirty martini? She had to be told to put olive juice in a dirty martini. Oh my God, these videos make me confident. These videos make me feel like I was a better bartender than I thought I was. I need a glass. No ice, baby. You ladies have both just made the same cocktail. She poured that martini on, she served a dirty martini with ice in it. What martini has ice in it? Also, that martini is murky. That means she probably put a citrus. Did she, did she put a citrus in the dirty martini? Jail! Wow. Mm. That's a bit, uh, it's very dirty. It's really just a splash. You don't want people to have that experience nine times out of 10 that send that back. I don't think that's very dirty. I'm looking at that cocktail. I don't think that's very dirty. I think that looks fine. If it was very dirty, there would be more murkiness in that cocktail. I'm just pointing out what I see. Mine's chunky. It's a little chunky, yes. Uh, you've got some ice in here, which is completely unacceptable for a martini. I think you used lime juice. Um, that is not a dirty martini. Fire her. Fire her right now. <laughs> this is a vodka with lime juice and olives. We need to do better. You don't need to do better. You need to leave. You need to get out. <laughs> what do you recommend for draft beer? We have the ale. Something easy. Oh, All right, I'll yeah. try that one. You want to try that one? How about yeah. you? And I will just have a dirty martini. A dirty martini? Okay. You made no effort to upsell her. I'm always torn on upselling. I'm always torn on upsell. Like, should you always upsell? Especially with a martini, like what really are you upselling? Like personally, I never make a martini with well liquor, ever. Especially if in this case, they actually have a menu. So it's gonna say what vodka's in it, or at least it should. You have to be careful when you upsell because sometimes you could upset the customers if you push too hard. So if they're already ordering a cocktail with a higher shelf spirit in it, in the case of a martini, which should be the case, upselling in that situation might not only be unneeded, but also also inappropriate, personally in my opinion. On the other hand, if you're ordering like a vodka soda, then I'm gonna be like, do you want a Tito's maybe, a Grey Goose? Because otherwise you're getting well. So it's not dirty enough and he used well vodka. Well, 
There we go. Never use Welbaca in a martini. If you're ordering a martini, you should know that you're not getting Welbaca. I'm not even gonna ask. I'm just gonna give you the higher spirit because no one's gonna like a Welbaca mar No one. A martini's all vodka. I'm not gonna give you all shit. I'm only gonna give you Welbaca if there's a bunch of other ingredients making the cocktail better. So should she have specified? Yes. Should the bartender should have clarified in that situation? Yes, now he's making me eat my words on everything he just said. I gotta stop assuming that these people know what they're doing. That's where I'm going wrong. Also, if I hear one more comment about whether or not the cocktail is dirty enough in a dirty martini, are all of these fucking dirty martinis? Does anybody else get different martinis? Because I'm getting a little tired of them saying it's not dirty enough or it's too dirty. That's such a cop-out answer for me right now. Look at them all standing around. Nobody's hurrying to take care of anybody. Look at the crossed arms and the yeah. body language, the hands on the hips. It's an empty bar. They're probably waiting for a customer to need something. I'm just gonna say, if I was, if I had that body language, it's because nobody needed to have anything served. If I saw people at that bar waiting there, I would yell at them for it, like I've done in other videos. But I'm looking at that clip and there was no one really sitting around needing anything. After I ordered the sea breeze, they pretty much told me they didn't have the ingredients for it. So she just brought us both an apple martini. I find it pretty weird that I didn't ask for that drink and they just decided that they were gonna bring me what they wanted to bring me. Okay, goddamn. <laughs> I've been a bitch. I have been a bitch as a bartender, but to bring someone something that they didn't even want or ask for? <laughs> we were wondering if we could actually get a different one of these that's a little bit strong. Maybe. Too strong? Yeah. Okay. Two things. One, if you're ordering a martini and you complain that it's strong, I'm gonna hit you. <laughs> also, I'm looking at those cocktails and it's probably not that they're too strong, it's probably the fact that I don't think they put any citrus in that drink. When I make an apple martini, I use vodka, apple pucker, and sweet and sour mix, or a lemon juice with a little bit of simple syrup if they want it sweet. I'm looking at those drinks and they're completely clear, which says to me that they probably just did vodka with a little bit of apple pucker to be quick and cheap. Easy fix but completely wrong. <laughs> because if there was citrus in that drink, like I said there should be, then they wouldn't taste the alcohol as much, so they wouldn't think it was too strong because it would mask the flavor of the alcohol. Oh my God. She, she just poured their drink Why? back into the mixing glass and she's about to shake it again. Rather than make them a fresh one. Exactly. Boy, that's a first for me. I've never seen that before. Here's why you don't do that. Because she's probably realizing, oh, I probably fucked up and didn't use this main ingredient like I just talked about. But why this is wrong is by taking an already shaken cocktail and putting it back into the tin Adding the missed ingredient and reshaking it is just double watering it down. Uh, gin martini. Gin martini. A gin martini, do they want it wet or dry? That is depending whether or not they want vermouth. Don't just assume, because in these cases, I can't always blame the customer. The customers might not know. Some customers don't know the things you need to specify. We don't know how experienced they are. See, even in my bitchy state, even in my bitchiest state, when I want to be such a bitch back to the customers, I still know the proper way to act. <laughs> They just served a gin martini in a plastic cup and I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> Never accept a martini in a plastic cup. If the bar is only serving plastic cups for whatever reason, because sometimes that happens. For example, like when it's gay pride here in West Hollywood, we only serve plastic cups because we can't afford someone dropping a glass and shattering it in a crowd like that for safety reasons. Which is why when people order martinis, I let them know it's in a plastic cup, babe. You really, really don't want it. And I will only give it to them if they're stupid enough to insist. Because I will do everything in my power to never give somebody a martini in a plastic cup because that's terrible. A martini should always be served in a chair chill glass. The body heat from their hand holding that plastic, there's no insulation. You're going to have a warm glass spirit. You're gonna have a warm sh piece of gin. <laughs> you just spent $15 on a plastic cup full of some <laughs> warmed up gin. <laughs> God damn it. You got to um, do something like a, like a lemon lime yeah, throw in there. Just a twist. twist. They didn't even give it a garnish. Oh God damn it. <laughs> You know what, at this point, just set the place on fire and collect the insurance money. Cause I don't, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I tried to order a martini, but they didn't even have vermouth. And if you don't have vermouth, you can't serve a martini. So the drink- Yes, you can. Yes, you can, just not a good one. But I mean, they're serving it in a plastic cup, so we're already fucked, you know? Once drinks look like that, you're opening yourself up to criticism, no matter what. You didn't even need to taste those cocktails to know that they sucked. You didn't even need to. Using Tanqueray Gin, add our vermouth. 
vermouth. Makes all the difference. Roll that around, get the essence on the ice, and strain it off. Where did the glasses come from now? Because I'm gonna tell you, they probably only served it in a plastic cup because there were no glasses available. That's the only reason these people are not in jail in my mind. So where are these glasses coming? <coughs> <coughs> my body is shutting down. Can yeah, we get old fashioned? Um, I didn't look it up on my phone. Okay. Simple, simple cocktail, John. What's your favorite cocktail up there? It's a very simple cocktail. It's a very simple cocktail, which he absolutely should know. However, a bartender looking up a cocktail they don't know on their phone? That's literally how I learned how to bartend. Where he went wrong is he told them what he was doing. Bartenders, bartenders, listen to me. Lie, lie till your fucking mouth falls off. How did I get to where I am today? I fucking lied. I'm a great liar, okay, I'm a Gemini. In a situation like this, you say, sure thing, and then you go into the back and you Google it on your phone and you come back out and make it. My favorite is the mule, cause it's easy to make. The mule is as easy to make. Okay, I'll try that. Okay, <laughs> here's the thing with this bartender. He's being honest. Everything he's saying I'm relating to. That's that's what I'm gonna admit right here, right now. Because if you ask me, what's your favorite drink to make? I'm gonna say a shot of tequila. Because <laughs> it's the easiest shit to make. It's the easiest thing to make, and then you're gonna drink it quickly and need to get another drink and tip me more. That's why I'm gonna tell you a shot of tequila. Am I gonna tell you that? No. What did you just put in it? <laughs> he grabbed some 10 day old lime juice and threw it in there. It was the nastiest, sourest drink I've ever had in my life. Wow. That's too much lime juice. I mean, there is lime juice in a mule. But what's going on? <laughs> Maybe the lime juice was expired? That's the only re thing I could think was wrong? I didn't see the other ingredients he put in, but all they're complaining about is the lime juice in a mule. So maybe it was bitter. I don't fucking know. Can you do like a gin, gin martini? You yeah, I could. Let's see how he does with the gin martini. The proper way to make a martini is to stir it. And he's actually gonna shake it. Uh, I mean, maybe that's true. Uh, I mean, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you it's not because that's facts, I don't know. Is that something that I always did? Nope. More often than not, I know that you shake vodka martinis. Gin martinis, it's when it's up in the air. That's when people sometimes like it stirred. So where he went wrong is he didn't ask. Maybe I don't know that because I was always smart enough in that situation to ask. Because if you ask the customer, who like we said before, may not know to ask, then it's on them. <laughs> and you relinquish all responsibility because if it's shaken and they didn't want it shaken, you could be like, then why'd you say you wanted it shaken? So what are we learning right now? If you don't know, do two things, lie or ask. Yeah, even Sarah thinks to drink suck. Let me make you guys some drinks. Actually, I want to try the French I'm gonna 75. toss these. Fresh 75 is great. Done. Thank you. Bing. You know what, we got a superstar in her. Yeah. Oh yeah, she's a much better bartender just cause she handled the situation. Bartenders get so butthurt if you tell them that they made the drink wrong. But the ones that get extra pissed are the ones that actually made the drink wrong. I knew I never made the drink wrong. So if someone came to me and they said, hey, this drink is wrong. And I knew for a fact it wasn't and they were just being a bitch. I did what I said I'd do before. I take the drink, I said, sure, no problem for customer service, cause I need that tip. And then I would walk around the bar and give them the same drink back and 95% of the time, they loved it. Welcome. Tim. Tim, good to meet you guys. The only people here are the three that I sent in. There's only three people in the bar. There's three people in the bar and you're complaining. At that point, just remake the drink. The only reason I would do my trick before was because I was busy. You have three people in your bar and you're being a bitch about remaking the drink. I'll make you whatever the fuck you want just because I'm bored and need something to do. Do you think it's funny that you don't know how to make any of the drinks that you've been on your board for a year? I know how to make them just because it's not exactly to their taste doesn't mean that you're doing it wrong. Is this a bartender who cared about what you wanted? Bartenders, you're not making the drink for you. You're making it for the customer. Notice that I said 95% of the time I was right. The only time I was wrong is if the customer wanted to make an alteration. If that is the case, then you do what they ask. Even if they didn't know to mention it, because like I said, they don't always know what to ask. So we have to be lenient and adjust to the customer. As long as they're being respectful. These people were being completely respectful. I'm not telling you to deal with disrespect, but someone just telling you that they don't like the thing that they're paying for doesn't mean that they're being disrespectful. So even if you made it right, make it the way they want. You want to get behind a bar? You learn the freaking drinks. Tea, tea. And if you don't know how to make the drinks, 
Pretend like you do. Because when I was just starting to bartend and trying to figure out what I was doing, because I absolutely had no clue, you know what I wasn't doing at the same time? Being really stubborn and acting like I knew everything. Sometimes I even learned from the patron. There were people ordering drinks that knew how to make the drinks I didn't know how to do. In those cases, I was lucky. I worked at a bar that was slow like this, so I could learn. When you're a bitter bitch who's stubborn and acting like you know everything, you don't do shit and you don't succeed. Instead, ask how to make it properly. Learn how to adapt. Learn customer service. That's how you hustle. That's how you make money. A majority of the job of bartending, especially at a slow establishment like this, is being personable. Because that way, even if you fuck up, people will then like you and give you another chance. Look at me! I fuck up all the time. Y'all see me do shit on this channel all the time. Am I the most astute bartender you've ever seen? No, but am I fun? I think so. No one's coming here because I'm the most knowledgeable and I make the most exquisite things you've ever seen. You're coming here to drink and have fun. <laughs> That's it. What do you guys think? In the comments down below, let me know the best qualities a bartender could have for you. If the bartender messed up your drink order and was personable or apologetic or willing to adapt to the way you made it in a nice, polite manner, would you be okay with it? Would you give them another chance? And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and subscribe for future ones. I put them out every Tuesday and Thursday, but sometimes I'm late, just like your mom. Thank you to everybody over on Patreon, especially the regulars and barflies for helping support this channel. Without you guys, I would not be able to do it, so I appreciate you more than you know. And special thank you to this person over on Twitter. If you would like a special shout out in one of my videos, be sure to retweet them when they come out. And that's it guys. Thank you so much for joining me here today. My name is Mike of GTV and you are fucking welcome.